Welcome to Willow's Green Permaculture. So this video I'm preparing in response to a number of your questions about uh, how we control pests, how we uh, keep down the amount of uh, uh, foraging by wild animals in our garden, deer, etc. Um, also, this video is a little bit, a little bit about design because people asked us about design, about the design of the uh, radial garden in the front. Uh, others asked us about permaculture. This video is going to touch points on all of those. Uh, this may not be the video that I look at the map. That will be uh, the, the the different maps you saw in the uh, exploring alternatives video. That will be for another video coming soon. But this one is definitely going to talk about design anyways, but from the point of view of uh, the plants we grow and why we put them there and the, their position and so on. Uh, it's going to talk also about what we do for animals because we're here not only to feed ourselves but also to restore native biodiver biodiversity. To give animals and insects and so on a space because they get less and less uh, in our world every year and we're trying to give them a little bit of a haven where uh, they can exist and as a result of what we do doesn't only benefit us by giving us pollinators and beautiful native wildlife but it also benefits the people with gardens and farms around us because our uh, our gardens and so on support the pollinators that support other gardens and the farmers and so on and uh they it, and it also uh, provides wildlife uh, so people can see it uh, more often so we're going to talk about all of that here uh well the fact for instance that we plant stuff outside of our garden giving easy access to the wildlife so they can uh, eat some of it there, we still are able to harvest in those other places and we have uh, fewer animals that come into our garden. But we're going to talk about what we do to uh, prevent, uh, well to make it so fewer animals let's say go into our garden. And so, uh, uh, so let's get started. So here's our garden. You know, uh, it's a different view from the aerial view you that you could see in the in that exploring alternatives video this is a view from from the ground in the winter um but this is going to allow us to show you what we what we do at the ground level for the plants and for the animals so as you can see there's there's the circular portion of it and all around the circle there is a fence which is right here the fence is uh, made from simple ro fence rolling and uh, inexpensive fence rolling and, and we so we you know we uh, put this up ourselves and the posts are all from a species of uh, buckthorn that's non-native here that's invasive that we had growing uh, throughout our our wooded wooded area in the back our forest in the back and we had to get rid of it so uh, now I don't like to waste anything, so we so I cut everything and uh, cut cut these posts and let them dry. Obviously, because uh, just as you have likely remember from my uh, stem cutting, branch cutting uh, video, these posts could very have easily have uh, turned into new trees if I had uh, put them in the ground too quickly. And uh, so I had to let them dry to make sure that they wouldn't. Uh, Resprout, sprout roots and so on, although some of them did start sprouting, so I had to keep on top of them, uh, remove uh, remove any uh, leaves that were sprouting so that they wouldn't develop more roots. So this is the fence, and then on the outside of the fence, back up a little here, what you can see is there's a there's about a, a meter wide garden surrounding the, out, the whole outside of the fence, and then on the outside of that, there's a layer of wood chips that uh, basically uh, uh, draws a line between between the perimeter of the garden 
and the grass. So the wood chips help keep the grass out of the garden, which is very important because grass is one of those very, very aggressive uh, species that will spread everywhere. So we want to keep it out of our garden and give us less work. So that's what these wood chips are for that we get for free from arborists. They, uh, they deliver them for free here. Uh, if, because it's convenient, obviously, for them. They don't have to dispose of them when they deliver them to us. So, and then in the contour, what we put are native uh, flowers, native wildflowers, and uh, many other uh, species of plants. So native wildflowers to attract birds and pollinators to our garden. But also we've chosen the uh, flowers and so on that we've chosen species to uh, put more of than others that will do things like they will repel deer. Like for instance, this is yarrow. Deer do not like yarrow and they come and smell it and they don't like it and they possibly this will uh, cause them to go away. Uh, yarrow is also a wonderful plant. It's medicinal and <clears throat> great in a tea for preventing colds and so on. Here's some more yarrow. Here's some native flowers that uh, attract the pollinators and so on. And we also put in uh, um, uh, uh, aromatic herbs, bitter herbs. Like here we have some sage here, which is also medicinal. And here we have some garlic chives. So garlic chives and sage. The, uh, the, the animals really don't like this type of stuff. The bitter stuff, the yarrow is also bitter. The animals don't like it. They smell it, they go away. And uh, here's another native... Uh, plant very important this is a uh, um, New England aster which uh, is one of the last plants that the monarch butterfly uses uh, in at the, uh, towards mid to the end of September before they uh, they do their migration from Canada down to Mexico so one of the last flowers to bloom in the fall now the fence is very short it's only four feet tall if that, uh, so this would never stop a deer, for instance, from hopping over it and going into the garden. So that, that's why the, these plants are here that will maybe repel the deer. But if they really want to get into the garden, they could. However, another thing we have put is up here on this, at this height, there is a line that goes all around the garden. It's a fishing line. Um, and the deer kind of detect it and it, they don't like it. It, it, uh, makes them nervous about jumping over the fence with that line there. Uh, we, we hang uh, little uh, shiny things off of it so that the deer notice it more easily. Or if they touch it like this, as you can see, the bells ring and the deers hear it. So if they, if they, uh, they're kind of looking over the fence to see if they want to jump, they, they touch this line here and it makes the bells and so on ring. And so they think, oh, there's somebody around. And uh, so that, that's what we do to try and scare them away. So that uh, now we don't want them to go away entirely. We like to see the deer. We just don't want them eating inside our garden. And this seems to work quite well. And I'm going to show you a little later how some of our plants have started to grow on this line. And uh, making our fence even taller. Some of our uh, rose uh, rose vines and grape vines and raspberries and so on but I'll show you there I'll show you that when we get there we we actually our first year we put up a deer fence uh, which was uh, uh, about as high as this line that I just showed you so at a height that's supposed to really keep the deer out but the the problem with the deer fence was it, it was this type of a mesh and we used these posts to hold it up and they worked really well but the deer fence was made of a type of a mesh. It was just terrible. Now, like I said, we, we, uh, wildlife is important to us. And that mesh was, uh, first of all, it, uh, it, uh, it stopped the frogs from going in as well. And, uh, and, and animals would get caught in it all the time. Squirrels, chipmunks, frogs, snakes. I remember one time I had to rescue a snake out of the deer fence because it was all caught in there and it was going to just, uh, so, I had to untangle it from the deer fence and uh, and remove it, um, you know, all the while telling the, the, the snake, okay, I'm going to save you, so uh, don't, don't you bite me. It was a little garter snake, and uh, it left me alone. It let me rescue, rescue it, and, and, uh, and it went on its way. Um, so I didn't want to have to do that kind of thing anymore, and I was getting tired of, of um, burying birds and... Uh, and chipmunks that were getting caught in the fence. 
Um, and so we got rid of it right away. Um, and we, we put this one in instead. So it doesn't really stop the animals. It just kind of slows them down. Um, uh, the only animal that it seems to stop completely is, is rabbits because the rabbits don't really climb. Although I suppose they could dig under it, but we have cats that hang around all the time. And, and because of those cats, I don't think the rabbits are, uh, you know, I don't think they're prepared to uh, make the effort to dig, uh, with cats that could be lurking around, perhaps. Not sure, but uh, we do see rabbits all the time. Uh, we see deer, we see squirrels, chipmunks, uh, foxes, uh, great blue herons. Uh, we have hundreds of frogs. We have garter snakes, uh, northern water snakes, and so on. And so uh, we have quite, quite, so quite a bit of wildlife, lots more that I can't think of off the top of my head. And we're really happy about that because they help control the, well, especially the frogs and the snakes help control the the uh, the frogs help control the bugs uh, just as just as efficiently as ducks. Except that frogs uh, don't eat our food. Uh, you know, you let a duck go, you you put ducks into your garden so they they clean the bugs out of your garden. Well, they're gonna eat some of your vegetables too. Uh, they love vegetables, but the frogs don't do that. They're quite uh, they're they're quite efficient at uh, taking care of the bugs. So. So yeah, and uh, one thing we do for it to make sure that we get frogs in our garden, I'll show you a little later, but uh, there, it's kind of hidden now, but oh, you can see it here, all around this contour. The contour, it's got this contour that goes all around the outside of the fence, has got two rows of logs around it. And uh, the frogs love the logs because they use that as, as shelter. Frogs also use the wood chips as shelter because uh, it keeps nice and moist under there. And on the other side of the garden, we have a rain garden, which I'll show you. The frogs, that's where they stay in the winter. And, uh, but I'll show you that in a minute. So here, for example, is a grapevine, a wild grapevine that we are able to uh, harvest from that is that has uh, grown all along that line I was showing you. So it's these vines are making our our fence higher. And then here we have some purple coneflower, which the deer also don't like, and that helps keep them away. So here's some more uh, coneflower here, and uh, here here is some liatris, which is a beautiful native flower, uh, blazing star, I believe it's called. And here's another type of liatris, and uh, also we have. Uh, we have mint and oregano throughout our contour. Here's a bunch of mint right here. I love mint. People say don't put your mint in the garden because it's aggressive. But uh, whenever it get there gets to be a bit too much, we just pull it all out uh, and we'll harvest it and use it for tea and so on. We have an abundance of it. So here's here you can see the logs a little bit more that are great for the frogs. And here I'm gonna show you where the frogs live. So this area of our garden, maybe I'll show you a picture from our first year here. This was just a very poorly drained area of grass. It was just a front lawn. As you saw in the video there, there was just grass, front lawn, nothing natural here, just all grass. Um, that's what this whole front lawn was like. And in this whole area of the front lawn, going all the way to the garden there, yeah, quite a huge area. Almost, uh, almost I would say 300 square meters. This was all under a few uh, maybe 10, 10, 15 centimeters of water. So what we did was we created a rain garden here. We dug down a little so the water would all concentrate in one area, make a bit of a pond. And so this fills. It's not always full with water but it fills whenever there's rain and then for instance in the winter time it usually stays full all winter. And we have a little tiny very very narrow canal here also a very shallow one um, which when there's a tremendous amount of uh, rain and water and so on well it will go uh, drain to the stream over there and so but what's important for us is to keep to hold on to and keep this water which is as you can see it's very close to the garden and it encourages uh, wildlife uh, to stay close to the garden because of course they all need the water so that's why we got to have so many frogs and toads which is really really wonderful and then surrounding the rain garden we have 
uh, uh, species of plants that love to have their feet wet. For example, elderberry right here, which in the fall of uh, 2019, before we moved in, um, I had brought with me some uh, some branch cuttings like it, like you saw in the video um, that I had put into pots before coming here. And they spent the winter in the garage and they planted them the following spring. And this is what they've become. Uh, eight branch cuttings have become and we, we get a year's worth of elderberry. Uh, since last year, we've gotten a year's worth of el elderberry each year. The elderberries attract the birds close to our garden and the birds help us control the insects, the slugs and so on. And we're still able to get a year's worth each year in spite of this. And uh, we also have elderberries elsewhere on our property, which we mostly leave to the birds because we get enough from these elderberries here. In this last part of the video, we'll show you what's going on and lots of our contour that helps keep the animals out. So you just saw a very large thistle plant, which feeds the yellow finches and many types of finches and songbirds and also keeps the animals out. And here we've just passed by uh, a bunch of raspberry and here we have some rose rose bush vines or rose vines that are growing all over the contour and growing up the fence and also growing up onto that uh, fishing line that I had said. So they're actually hiding the fishing line, making it look more natural and they're helping to keep the little animals out because even I don't like walking close to these rose vines because I'm always getting caught on them. But uh, anyway, so they, they help keep the animals out, which is really nice. This is our pumpkin patch here. It's not uh, surrounded at all by anything, but uh, pumpkin vine is very prickly, so the animals don't really like them either. And here, once again, we have the contour, we have the logs, the frogs just love those logs. They hide under there. They hang out under there to wait for the bugs. They eat them and they, they, uh, it's their stomping grounds uh, as they get ready to go into the garden and go after the slugs. The, the frogs just love the slugs. They eat them all off of our plants in there in the garden. There's our garden all sleeping for the winter. Beautiful winter afternoon in January. So I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful and helpful. I know I likely did not answer all your questions. There are so many questions to ask and I'll, I have so much to share. And there's so much more I could have said in this video as I went over it and watched it. I said, oh, I could have said that there. I could have said this there. I could have said that other thing there. And so I will just ask you for patience. It's all coming. And don't hesitate to ask questions in the comments because those questions will help me design more videos, uh, which will be more helpful for more people. So... Thank you for watching, and uh, if you liked it, then don't forget to hit the like button, and don't forget to share it with your friends, your networks, and so on, uh, to, uh, to spread the word about uh, how everyone can do this. Thank you.